start this Friday edition of the Sports Mac Zone in a sentimental mood as one of Trinidad and Tobago's long-standing servants of football announced his retirement from international duty. Goalkeeper Marvin Phillip has stepped away from the Soka Warriors team 16 years after making his debut against Panama. In 2008, his career was in doubt after a stabbing incident in the community of Hard Bargain, but the 39-year-old made a full recovery, going on to make 92 appearances for the Soka Warriors. We welcome Marvin to the Sports Mac Zone. He joins us live via Zoom. Marvin, great to have you on the show. Um, pleasant good afternoon to you guys, and thank you for having me. Let, let me start by saying that you look nothing like 39 years old. You look like 25. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I keep myself well and normal. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Um, what triggered this decision, though? Because um, you've been a staple with uh, Trinidad and Tobago's Soko Warriors for a decade and a half now. Um, you know, I had a discussion with my family, you know, my wife, my family, my kids, you know, and I, I told them, you know, this is the route I would like to go down. And, and we all agree now is a good time to step away from the international level. Yeah, your, your tenure as a Soka Warrior goalkeeper has seen you compete with a lot of outstanding goalkeepers in the past decade and a half, you know, Clayton Ince and Ross Russell and outstanding goalkeepers. Um, uh, I, didn't get a chance to play, I didn't get a chance to play the Ross, but um, I definitely got a chance with Clayton Ince, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he was definitely outstanding. That was two, after the 2006 World Cup, you know, at the five, posi five uh, position with him being there. Yes. I learned a lot from him at, at that point in time. Yeah, we've missed the Caribbean Cup tournament, which hasn't been in existence for well over a decade now, um, which I think has robbed a lot of Caribbean players of, of more regional competition. I know there's the Nations League, but is the Caribbean Cup something that you miss, that it doesn't exist anymore? Yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly something that, that, that we miss. Um, it, it, it had a rich history, you know, but unfortunately, CONCACAF or FIFA find, find a way to, to, to shock their new league. But definitely, it used to give players in the Caribbean a good, a good chance to showcase themselves. Yeah, and of course, TNT are eight-time champions of the Caribbean Cup. No Caribbean team has won more titles than TNT has. What, Marvin, has been your best memories of uh, playing internationally for TNT? Um, best memories, you know, um, would have been would have been some 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 tough games in tough stadiums. You know, um, we would have played the likes of Costa Rica. You know, I, I have found memories on 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 that. You know. Um, one of the latest would have been Mexico in the 2021 Gold Cup. Um, uh, Japan in 2019 on a friendly match. So it, there's a lot, but these three are, that are the most fond memories come, coming to my mind right now. Right, and in the 92 appearances that you had for the Trinidad and Tobago Soka Warriors, you were also captain uh, during some of the matches. How much did you enjoy being the leader in those matches? Uh, it, it, it was definitely a pleasure, definitely, definitely a pleasure to, 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 to lead the, the country in, 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 in many of those games, you know. Um, at that time, you know, I, I had a lot of experience, you know, so I just tried to, to lend it towards, towards the, the younger ones on the team and share my experience with them as well and try to lead from example. Yes, and one of the things that really stood out for me is current coach Angus Eve, when describing you and talking about you, you really stressed on the leadership role that you played in the team and the impact that you had on the current goalkeepers. So that brings me to a question, because while coach was, I was read, reading that interview that coach gave, will you ever consider coaching? <laughs> um, definitely, definitely, definitely. You know, um, when I was when I was young, coming up, you know, there were senior goalkeepers, and they were like um, Kelvin, Kelvin Jack, and Clayton, and so you know? So they they had impacted their knowledge to, um, towards me. So you know, I I been the experienced goalkeeper around, and a lot of young keepers passed through. You know, I I just it's just automatic that I need to lend my expertise towards them. Not only those on the national team, but those with the various clubs throughout our country. Um, definitely, I would like to to. To make that transformation soon 
but I'm not stepping away from the game just yet. I'll be playing in the local leagues, but just stepping away from the international level. Yes, I'm glad you made that clear because last season you played for AC Port of Spain and you and the team, of course, came second. So you're not done with football for good. We're still going to see you on the TTPFL. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely will be in the TTPFL. You know, um, yes, I was with AC, we came second. Um, we had a horror in the club champ, the Caribbean Club Championship, where we, we just get one draw out of three games. But I definitely will be on the local circuit, circuit in the TTPFL. Yeah, Marvin, I know at the top of the segment that you said you um, spoke with your family, um, including your wife and kids, before making this decision. Um, did you have discussions with the current Trinidad and Tobago head coach, Angus Eve, and if so, um, what were those discussions like before coming to this decision? Um, honestly, I didn't. I didn't have any discussions with him, with him prior to the to the to the to the uh, making this move. Um, he definitely called me after and and wished me well and thanked you for my service and and whatnot. But before making this move, um, before announcing the retirement from the international level, I, uh, I didn't have any conversation with him. It was just uh, in house with family and friends and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, the, the discussions that you had, uh, uh, you have been playing. Um, so what ultimately would you say was the deciding factor or the deciding factors? Yes, I understand that the, the family might have said, yes, it's time, but why? Um, I, I don't want to make it seem that that that... that is the last four games I wasn't there, but it's, it's definitely has nothing to do with that. You know, um, the national team level, you know, there's a lot of a, a, a commitment and, and and a lot of sacrifices need to be made. And at this time of my life, I know I, I, I really don't think I would I want to make those sacrifices anymore. Um, I don't know if you know my history, you know, but but I made a lot of sacrifices for this country. You know, um, I had a tragic incident playing for this country back in 2014. You know, so all of these things would have would have would have would have helped me with my decision. Mm. Uh, could you um, elaborate on the tragic incident in 2014, Marvin? <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, that was we went to play a friendly match in Argentina mm -hmm. against Argentina and was traveling to Brazil. And on that day, 6th of June, 2014, I lost a son. Mm. Can you say anything more about it? No, I don't want to go into anything more about it. Mm. Um, Marvin, well, you seem emotional at the moment. Um, is, is, is your emotion at the moment in any way reflective of a difficulty in making this decision, the one you have made, stepping away? Uh, no, no I, I, don't think, I don't think it was a, was a difficult situation. You know, I just, as I said prior, you know, I made a lot of sacrifices and, and you know, away from family and, and kids and whatnot, you know, and I just think now is the right time, you know, that I should be more a family man or more towards my family at this, at this present time. That helped me with the decision. Yeah, Marvin, how long have you been thinking about this? <laughs> um, this wasn't just overnight. This this could have been this could have been like probably about it came it came to my mind like probably about a year, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Marvin, you had a a stint where you were on the books of an Indian club, Naroka, I think. Um, no, Ruka, no, yes, no, Ruka, no, Ruka FC, yeah. um, 2019 into 2020, just before COVID hit. Oh, yes. Could you talk to us about that and what was that experience like? Um, it definitely was a, was a great experience, you know, going out there and, and learning other cultures, um, learning how, how, how other countries play their football, you know. Um, unfortunately, the club I was at wasn't a, a, a top club, you know, they... they they try to be professional, you know, but the results, we wouldn't get any results, you know, but it definitely was a, was a good experience for me at that present point in time. Yeah, Marvin, I want you to describe for us, as you see it, the state of Trinidad and Tobago's football now 
in comparison to when you played for the first time at the international level? Um, back when I made my debut, you know, there was, um, that was right after the World Cup. You know, football was, an, football was definitely on a high in our country. Um, I don't want to go too much into it, but, you know, um, players at that point in time were, were blacklisted. Um, and that gave players opportunity to, to come forward. And fortunately, I was, I, was, I was one of that persons to come forward and, and, and represent the country at, at the highest level until, until I announced my retirement recently. Um, fast forward into now, uh, I think our, our, our federation and whoever wants to be in charge, everybody needs to come together to take Trinidad and Tobago football back where it's supposed to be. Yeah, um, I know the Normalization Committee runs Trinidad and Tobago's football at the moment, uh, Marvin, and that is not a situation that a genuine TNT football fan is happy about. And uh, the period of normalization has been protracted beyond the initial stages. But um, we'll continue to watch TNT's football closely, and we share your sentiments that we all want to see TNT football um, resuscitate to the level that we know that um, it, it had been for decades and we wish you all the best in your retirement and we'll be watching your performance in the pro league in tnt with ac port of spain although um the international um, um i i wouldn't be back with ac port of spain it's a little surprise who yes. i'll be back with but i wouldn't be back with ac port of spain this this season and you're not willing to say which club you'll be at no so, um, I'm, I'm still in final um finalization <laughs> finalization of our contract so yes. Eventually, you will get to see me. When, when you see highlights, you will see, okay, Marvin is playing with this team now. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, really a pleasure talking to you. And we have enjoyed your goalkeeping um, over the years. And we wish you good luck in the TNT League for whichever team you appear for. Thanks, man. Great talking to you. All right, thank you. And once again, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Great. Marvin Phillip there, retiring from international football after 16 years as a Soka warrior. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.